So guys, in this video, we'll be looking at the fifth as well as the sixth program from the CN laboratory, that is part A programs. So the fifth program is about GSM and the sixth program is about CDMA. So in GSM, it's used for the 2G technology, that is global system for mobile networks. And CDMA is used for 3G technologies and it is code division multiple access. So um, coming to the program, you'll be setting up the parameters like stop. So set stop. 100 and you have set type GSM and you have here for CDMA the GSM will be turned into CDMA and uh, make sure the set uh, S is uh, not capital uh, but here it is capital sorry for that and uh, next you have minimum threshold that is set to 30 and maximum threshold that is set to 0 and um, we'll be using a Q type called red here that is random early detection uh, which will actually calculate the average length or the size of the buffer like it will calculate the threshold so that the incoming um, incoming packet so that it'll, it can decide if the incoming packet can be taken up or it, it could be dropped so it uses a probability model rather than dropping uh, the uh, packets which are at the end as it is done in drop day so the um, REDQ which we'll be using is of the type adaptive so you'll be set set adaptive here one is for that REDQ uh, then you have uh, the for setting the uh, traffic you have flows is equal to zero uh, flows here is for uh, if it is a long lived uh, network then there will be more transaction but it is uh, we are not using long lived network so it is set flow 0 then you have set window 30 then you have set web 2 uh, then for the plotting the statistics we have set opt of wrap 100 and set opt of source trace that is is so is is initial sender so how the packets go is that uh, from uh, initial sender that is is it will go to base station 2 or uh, you can name it as base station 1 but you have to change it in the program and from base station 2 it will go to the mobile station ms and from the mobile station ms it will go to the base station 1 that is bs1 and from bs1 it will go to the last point that is lp so that is about the source trace here it is initial sender and the destination is bs2 because that is the first link you'll be getting so we'll be setting up the downlink uplinks propagation delay for downlinks and uplinks uh, for um, the CDMA, the bandwidth, that is bandwidth uh, downlink, uh, it will be off CDMA. For GSM, it is off GSM. And the bandwidth is 9600 here. But for CDMA, it will be more. It will The performance is more. So you could set it as uh, for CDMA, it could be uh, set as. I'll be just writing a comment here. For CDMA, you can be setting it as... Uh, uh, 3 lakh 84,000 and the uplink for CDMA you can be setting it as that is here it is 9600 for CDMA will be you can set it as 64,000 so the prop delay it will be less that is um, propagation delay that will be less for downlink and uplink here it is 0 0.500 for both of the uplink and downlink for um, the CDMA it will be 0 0.1500 it will be less the delay will be less when compared to GSM so CDMA is more advanced as we know that 3G is more advanced than 2G so that is why the delay is less and the propagation that is the propagation delay is less and the bandwidth is high and as we know in simulation programs the mandatory things that is setting up the simulator object that is NS after which the trace file so that is done and the NAM file will be done in uh, the procedure called stop here so we'll be looking at it affiliate stage then we'll be setting up the nodes uh, here the setting of nodes is a little different where uh, you give nodes of IS that is you'll be naming the nodes here itself so that is why that is initial sender mobile station base station 1 base station 2 last point and this is the same syntax after that you have cell topo that is in order to have the links between all the nodes that I've told 
that is between the last point so we'll start from the last point so last point to base station one you have 3 mbps speed and there may be 10 nodes that is 10 mobile station between this thing that is not only one mobile station so we just specify 10 nodes and the queue is drop tail and uh, the duplex link between base station one it goes to mobile station so that is why the nodes ms then it is one one and red this is nothing but we are using red uh, queue here for uh, if the uh, links is between the uh, mobile station so from mobile station it will go to base station 2 again we'll be using the red queue after which uh, you have uh, the uh, link between uh, base station 2 and initial sender again 3 mbps and you set up 50 nodes here for the mobile station and the queue is drop tail so this is about the cell topology and you can also uh, see the next uh, procedure that is uh, make sure the p is uh, small here this is because uh, in word you once you enter the new line it gets capitalized so that is why it is uh, here also it is uh, p is small so and in drop tail d should be capital and t should be capital so that that is how it works otherwise it won't work a uh, set link para is the next procedure and we'll be passing a, a variable t um, what is variable t we'll be looking at in later stage so global ns nodes uh, prop uh, propagation delay between that is downlink uplink bandwidth uh, between downlink uplink and you have a buffer so all this will be specified in global after which you have to set the bandwidth between base station 1 and the mobile station again base station 2 and mobile station so the uh, bandwidth uh, down uh, like downlink is uh, $t what is $t we'll be looking at in a later stage uh, that uh, the link is duplex again you'll be setting the delay between the base station 1 and mobile station and base station 2 and mobile station and the propagation delay is dollar t again and the link is duplex and you will be setting the q limit between the base station 1 and mobile station that is 10 and between a base station 2 and a mobile station that is 10 again so since we are using the red q we will be specifying some variables that is whatever we have put in the value that will be taken taken here so q red is the syntax set adaptive this is the variable dollar adaptive since we have looked um, uh, like in earlier in the program adaptive we have set it as 1 and minimum max threshold is 0 and 30 so that will be taken here will be uh, referencing here, here and it will be dereferenced and the value will be set in the particular variables we have mentioned here and it will also be setting the window that is the window you have uh, specified the size uh also there that is 30 so that will also be specified by using the agent for tcp and source web tcl is the file that you'll be using that is a tcl script and you have switch dollar type so the type is also specified and after which uh, for uh, uh, the gsm now uh, you'll be specifying gsm gprs and umts and you'll be calling cell topo so cell topo will be here and uh, for CDMA, you will not be having GSM and GPRS. Instead, you will not be having UMTS also. Instead, you will be having CDMA of cell topo. Uh, so, these both lines won't be there. Instead of UMTS, you will have CDMA. Then you have settling para dollar type. Uh, then you have, you will be inserting a delayer. So, dollar ns insert delayer between uh, the nodes ms and bs1 ms and bs2 with the syntax new delay here. then you'll be checking if dollar flows equals to equals to zero yes it is true you'll be setting up the tcp agent but here or like the tcp is set in a different way where you'll be creating a connection that is dollar ns create new connection uh, tcp sac1 dollar nodes is that is initial sender and tcp sync uh, slash uh, sac1 that is dollar nodes um, last point so that is the link between the initial sender and the last point and with a null byte and you close it and you set up the ftp1 that is set tcp1 and you attach app ftp so the syntax is a little different from the other programs we have looked into 
and dollar ns as 0.8 you'll be setting up the traffic that is set ftp1 start then you have the procedure that is nothing but similar to that of your finish but here you'll be writing all the nam file everything uh, the execution part everything so you don't have to uh, like um, write the awk file whatever it is just have to uh, compile this by using ns command that's all so here it is uh, you specify the nodes that is opt nf then wrap then you have source id destination id and you'll use the source trace and destination trace you re dereference it and you'll have a tr file that will be set to a then you have to get two files that is get rc and draw to xc which are there in your ns2 so that has to be get uh, got here in order to execute this program so you specify the path that is the parent directory uh, so you specify like this then you have bin get rc and uh, dot to xc file afterwards you execute using these two files dollar get rc minus s or uh, dollar source id minus d um, that is did minus f that is null byte then you have the trace file out dot tr then you have the pipe symbol then you have the slash operator so again for raw to xc minus s 0.01 minus m dollar wrap minus r and all this is stored in the uh, plot dot xcr so in order to get the graph so the input for this file is through whatever execution has taken place through get rc and dot to xc file uh, this is a similar to the uh, previous execution but here you have uh, two uh, greater than symbol because in this execution part what happens is you just um, replace the file plot.xr like if it is there and you just start from beginning but if you have two indirectional operator then it is like you continue with the uh, same file then you have execute x graph file that is minus x you have the time that is x axis time minus y is packets that is y axis packets and you have the file name plot.xgr and you have dollar sign i mean and sign and you have exit zero and you have dollar ns at dollar stop and you stop the uh, simulation and dollar ns run so in order to run the simulation so that was about the fifth and sixth programs and this fifth and sixth programs have to be executed in wireless scripts so before you uh, type in the like before you open the file by using vi filem.tcl you need to change the uh, from root directory to the wireless script directory by using cd uh, desktop so this is the path desktop and you have ns all in one 2.34 then you have slash ns 2.34 then you have slash tcl then you have slash then you have ex then you have wireless scripts so this should be done before you start even writing the uh, program after that when you execute you will get if you do it in the root directory you won't be getting the output so it is wireless scripts so that was about the fifth and the sixth program for both fifth and sixth program you have to do this path chain then you have to start typing and compile the program in order to get your graphs thank you guys